Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Gracious and loving God, as we gather today on this Palm Sunday, we are reminded of the joyful anticipation and reverence that filled the hearts of those who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. Like the crowds who spread their cloaks and palm branches, we too open our hearts to welcome you into our midst. Lord, just as the people cried out, Hosanna, and proclaimed your blessed arrival, we also lift our voices in praise and adoration. You are the one who comes in the name of the Lord, bringing us hope, salvation, and peace to all who believe. May our worship today be a reflection of our gratitude for your boundless love and mercy. As we journey through this week, may we be ever mindful of the sacrifice you made for us on the cross and the victory you secured through your resurrection. Guide us, Lord, in the path of righteousness and give us courage to follow you faithfully, even in the face of adversity. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may bear witness to your love and share it to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Palm Sunday this morning. Are you glad to be here this morning, church? Amen. Are you ready to worship? Amen. Let us all worship together. To those who are with us worshiping online, we encourage you to join us in standing up and singing and lifting up our hands this morning to give praise to the one who saves.
continue to worship church.
let us reflect on the profound truth that our God is indeed mighty to save. In every trial, every struggle, and every moment of need, His power and love are unfailing. So let this song be a declaration of our trust in His strength and our confidence in His ability to rescue us and redeem us.
9 to 12 says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worship God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, as we enter into this holy week, May we continually praise and worship you. Truly salvation belongs to our God. May we meditate on what it cost you, Lord Jesus, to save us. Give us opportunities this week to share you, Lord Jesus, with those who do not yet know you as their Savior and Lord. Father God, we pray for those who need your healing touch upon them comfort and encourage them as they wait upon you for their healing provide what is needed for them enable them to know that you are with them carrying them through this season in their lives we pray for those celebrating their birthdays this week mark lord jolyn cabrera greg sefri aaron azizemis Paul Santos, Mark Oliverius, Shante Lemtuaco, and Ava Melino. Thank you, Lord, for blessing them with another year. You know them intimately. Bring about circumstances in their life that will cause them to seek you more. Fulfill your purposes in their lives. We pray for those celebrating their wedding anniversaries this week. Thank you for giving Orlando and Bula Orio, Orario and Vic and Gal Cruz the gift of marriage. Bless them with intimacy with you and with one another. May your favor be upon them. Father God, there are so many needs within our world and even on our island. You are sovereign. Fulfill your promises in our world and on our island. We pray against the work of the enemy. Save the souls you died for. Thank you that you desire none to perish. Let us be reminded this week of your amazing love to save us. Help us to share that amazing love with those who you bring across our path. Father God, we ask your anointing be upon our director of missions, Tegi Sin as she preaches in celebration of the National Women's Month of the Church of God. Open our minds, hearts, and spirits to receive your word. Enable us to obey that which you ask of us. Thank you for your promise that says that your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish what you desire and achieve the purpose for which you sent it. We pray your will be done. Be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's all stand up, Familia, and let's greet one another this morning.
Sacrifices. Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home. We want to welcome uh, first. We want to welcome. Um, I was really surprised this morning because he's here, and no matter what, everybody knows that I have a cancer, but he's here to worship with us, Pastor TJ. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he can walk now. Woo. And he's very happy, Cynthia. Can you just give a round of applause to Cynthia? The beautiful doctor of uh, Pastor TJ. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. I want to welcome Lorna Kapunpon also. Welcome, Lorna. And add to that, we want to... Um, uh, extend our sincere condolences to the Kapunpon family for the passing of Mr. Loreto Kapunpon Sr. And he passed away last Friday, father of June Kapunpon and father-in-law of Lorna Kapunpon. Please extend you know, our condolences to the whole family. Yeah, And he's in California and the family are going to California soon. Again, welcome home church and welcome to those who are worshiping online. I just want to thank you for our little kids, the guys here, the boys, for celebrating the Palm Sunday. And thank you so much, Kim, and our kids church. God bless you. I think they left already. We want to welcome, I know he's been back already, but we want to welcome and congratulate because he won three third place. Uh, gold, uh, not gold, uh, third place is silver, bronze, to the, in Japan, the Asian Sports Jiu-Jitsu Federation to Jeremiah Manli. Yeah. It's a two category and he won third place. Praise God that we have another security here in the church. <laughs> All right. Jeremiah, God, are you okay? No injury? Yeah? You, you want to try a uh, bunny? <laughs> Na, yeah? <laughs> Edwin, are you ready? <laughs> it's count already. One, two, three. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeremiah. 
Praise, praise us to God for good news of healing we received this week. Of course, Pastor TJ, thank you, church, for praying for Pastor TJ. And continue to pray for our, our, our friends, our family who's been uh, struggling from uh, sickness. And those who are like positive from uh, COVID, just continue to pray for them also. And um, also, Uncle Light. He's here, but he's having a hard time to walk for how many weeks now? And good to see you, Uncle uh, Ike. And he won gold from Jitsu, 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 Jitsu. <laughs> Again, we praise God for the opportunity to visit the venue for our mission in the Philippines. We have a picture. We're so excited, church, and thank you for praying for this. The first church of God in Santa Maria Bulacan, and this is the family. And go ahead. Uh, this is the place where we're gonna stay. Um, small bed, I think, is a mission. I think we're just gonna fit there. And then the good news, go back. On the lower part, where the store of a small restaurant. Hey, happy. And the second floor, the owner of that, they are building an event, event uh, facilities, and they said that they're going to block that schedule for us to use for free. And I think if we are not fit to that area, we, all the guys are going to go there. And you know, the restaurant closed at 12 midnight. I stop. We're gonna miss you. Because they have sisig. A, a vegetable sisig. <laughs> oh, we tried the sample. We tried the sample and so, so, so good. Whew. All right. And next slide, please. And this is the church. And they're all excited, so funny because they said the first years of God Guam, the pastors are visiting us and to check the facilities. Everybody's so scared because they thought I'm American. <laughs> and they said they thought I'm a white person. When they saw me, they said, Hi, how are you? Kamusta? Oh, he's Filipino. <laughs> So they're all excited, the church, and next slide, please. And this is the facilities of the church. And the church building is small, but they have 3,700 square meters property. How, how many is that? In, is that hectares? Come on, engineers. Less than half acres. And they own the facilities. And yeah, so this is where we're going to do our VBS and to this church. And uh, they are all excited. And on the 16, they asked the First Church of God to lead, to lead the whole worship service. So we're taking, taking care of that. And because Edwin is going to go with us, so he's going to preach that Sunday. All right, next slide. And we have the VBS for four days and the youth conference for two days. And also, um, praise God for also for the opportunity to preach and be a part of the 50th anniversary of the House of the Lord Church, where I was ordained in 1997. I was there uh, during the 25th anniversary, silver anniversary, and now it's 50th anniversary. And while I was, it was a joy to know that their senior pastor now is one of my youth before. And he said that I was the one who had led him to the Lord and now serving him. Hallelujah. We had a joyful time celebrating with all of them. And they are sending greetings to all of you. And also, last Friday, praise God. Do I have a picture for that? Uh, Oh, oh, which one? On the lady on this side, she's the owner of the resort where we stay for our uh, mission trip. 
And yeah, and they gave us a big, 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 big discount. Praise God for that. All right. Do we have another picture for uh, the couples? Yeah, there we go. So praise God for the 48 couples who attended last Friday for the marriage course experience. And thank you for your prayers. And we heard good reports from them. And please pray for those who didn't make it because of illness. Uh, makes out will be held this week. 50, 53 couples registered. Can we give a round of applause? Thank you so much. Good groups, thank you for meeting and growing together. As a small group, you can meet after service or anytime outside of church and invite friends. And you can invite friends to join with you too. Prayer wall, church, continue to post praises, prayer requests, or appreciation on the prayer. So we encourage everyone, just put your prayer request and we are willing, the prayer intercessors are willing to pray for you. So we encourage after church, write it down, all your prayer requests there. And thank you for those who are coming to the church uh, uh, to pray and to, to come and to pray for those who are requesting for prayer. And again, in behalf of the Philippine Mission Fundraising Team, we would like to thank you for your support last Sunday. And God bless you more and more. Thank you so much. And the movie is really, really good. Please send, again, this coming April 6th, please send in biology, uh, the pliers to your friends. And uh, we encourage them because they're going to give us how many percent? Uh, at least 10% of the sale that night is they're going to give it to the uh, First Church of God mission. Thank you, thank you. This Thursday, we encourage the whole family of the First Church of God for our Monday Thursday. We are inviting you to come at the sanctuary on March 28th at 7 p.m. And this time, we'll have you gather your family and break the bread and as a family also and wash, or wash each other feet. We are doing this in obedience and remembers, remembrance of what Jesus did. And we have some uh, a Last Supper uh, arrangement that night. Come at our Easter sunrise. What time next Sunday? It's 6.30. Next slide. 6.30 in the morning with pot, pot faith breakfast and fellowship games. I want to ask uh, Ray right now to do some uh, short announcement. Sorry. Morning, church. Um, Shara texted in the group chat uh, about the donations for the um, Easter egg hunt. So if you do have any donations that you want to give, uh, you can either, either give it to me or Rebecca for today. And that's it. Coins. Thank you. Also the coins, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have extra coins in your car, get it and then uh, donate it. <laughs> so again, 6.30 and with fat weight and also we are celebrating the Chamorro Heritage that Sunday. So we encourage everyone if you can wear the, um, what? What do you call that? The island wear. Is that the correct word? Island wear. This week is a special week for believers of Jesus Christ because it's this Holy Week. And we commemorate the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Savior. And today on Palm Sunday, as we start the Holy Week, let's look back to the time when Jesus began his journey toward his death on the cross. Church Palm Sunday is the day that we remember Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem where he was welcomed like a king, and also the first day of Holy Week, the week of events leading up to Jesus' ultimate sacrifice. And today, Holy Week is a powerful reminder that God's work is not done, hope is coming. Amen? So from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday, Holy Week shows us God's plan to redeem the world. So today, we will encourage everyone, especially the family. We will be sending, next slide please. We will be sending Holy Week Bible reading this week to prepare us for Easter. So this Sunday, we're going to start that today. So we encourage the parents to gather your kids and then lead, 
Let's read the chapter 12 and 13 for tonight or whatever time is available for you and tomorrow, Monday. I will send this to you later. Okay? So, are you okay for that, family? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's celebrate birthdays. Happy, happy birthday for March. Mark Lord, happy birthday today. Happy birthday, Mark. And Jolene Marie Cabrera today also. Greg Seffrey, happy birthday. Aaron Asusenas, happy birthday on the 27th. Paul Santos, happy, happy birthday. Mark Oliveros on the 28th. Chante Lituanco, where are you all going? <laughs> happy birthday, Shan. And also Ava uh, Malina, happy, happy birthday. Happy wedding anniversary to Orlando and Viola. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. How many years, Viola? 32. Wow, congratulations. And Vic and Gail. Vic, how many? <laughs> 12 years. Woo. Congratulations. Amen. So let us pause and pray for giving. And again, giving is beautiful, and let's pray for that. Father God, you are the giver of all good things, and your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. Just as you multiplied the offering of fish and the loaves that were freely given for others, we pray that you will multiply these, our offerings to you, and accomplish with them more than we could ask or imagine. We give freely and not from compulsion, for there is nothing we could give that matches your glory and majesty and the great gift of your Son, Jesus, and of the Holy Spirit, which guides us daily. All we have is yours, Father, and we ask that you would use us and all we have as you will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Morning, everyone. The Church of God Christian Women Connection has a long history of celebrating and supporting God's call on the lives of women and their voices. And they are celebrating every Sunday throughout March, Women's History Month. Church of God affiliated churches are filling the pulpits where women preachers, and they call it Preach Her. Preach Her. 
And I'm blessed to have my wife today for saying yes to the call to share God's message for the women and for all of us this morning. So I, this, this is the first time I'm going to call Pastor Tay. She don't want it. Good morning, church. Yes, I don't want to be called the pastor. <laughs> pastor Ron will always be the pastor. It's Palm Sunday and Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. It's Holy Week and it's Women's History Sunday. Is there a connection between Holy Week and women? Were there women in the scene of the Palm Sunday, to crucifixion, to resurrection? Do women matter? And as a woman, do you feel you matter? These were the questions that came to my mind when I was requested by Pastor Ron to share God's word for the Church of God preach her Sunday. Let us pray. Lord, may the... Um, words of my mouth and the meditation of my mouth be pleasing to you. I don't deserve to stand here, but you deserve to be glorified through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So while praying and reading, I came across the work of Rachel Held events talking about the 12 disciples and the women in the holy week story and i said oh great this is good and i said yes there were women in the holy week story and i want to give an excerpt of rachel's work as introduction to god's message to me and to us this morning the 12 men in the in the story are the dozen jewish men chosen by jesus to be his closest companions, and first disciples, symbolic of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then the women are an unspecified number of female disciples who also follow Jesus. And the, you know how women will usually do welcoming him into their homes, financing his ministry, studying his teachings, and often instructing the 12 through their acts of faithfulness and devotion. Just as Jesus predicted in John 16, 32, you may open your Bible in John 16, 30, 32, most of the 12 abandoned him at his death. Jesus was talking to the disciples in John 16, 32, and it says, Listen to me. A time is coming when you will be scattered, each to his own home. In fact, the time is already here. You will leave me and I will be alone. But I am never really alone because the Father is with me. After that, who do you think stayed with Jesus? When you watch stories, yes, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Man. Yes, the women remained by his side through his death, burial, and resurrection. It is during Holy Week that the stories of these women really shine. There's a woman who anointed Jesus at Bethany on Thursday, a suffering of Mary of Nazareth on Friday, the women who waited through a long Sabbath before heading out to the tomb on Sunday, on Saturday, uh, on Sunday morning on a Saturday, and the story of Mary Magdalene on Sunday. And I quote Rachel Held Evan, she says, It is easy to dismiss the women of Holy Week. To say their presence at critical moments in the, story, in the Easter story is, is inconsequential. Holding no significance in modern day conversations about gender equity in the church. But I'm not convinced it's an accident that the first person to declare that Jesus had risen from the dead to a group of skeptical men was a woman. I'm not convinced it's unremarkable that God chose a woman to anoint the Messiah with oil and a mother to hear his cries from the cross. Church, when the rest of the world had given up on Jesus for failing to look like the liberator they expected, the women stuck around. They stuck around because before Jesus was a king, Jesus was their friend. 
And friends, you know, love one another through uncertainty, pain, fear, disappointment, and even, even death. And I continue, Rachel said, Jesus inaugurated his new kingdom in the presence of women. And yet, in many of our churches, women are still treated as a second-class kingdom citizens, prohibited because of their gender from being the first in their congregations to stand at the pulpit and declare, He has risen. I am just so happy to know that women had significant roles in the Holy Week in the Bible. I'm not degrading it not because I give high honor and respect to men. But it's also good to know that we have part in the story. Okay, so let us take a look at the women in the Holy Week story. First, the woman of Bethany who honors Jesus in Matthew 26, 6 to 13. Jesus interprets the woman's act as an act of worship as preparation for his burial. When the disciples rebuke the woman for what they see as a waste of money, Jesus responds by saying in Matthew 26, 10 to 13, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. For sure, I tell you, wherever this goodness is preached in all the world, this woman will be remembered for what she has done. Remember the woman? She loves Jesus with perfume during that time. And this is interesting. We aren't even sure of this woman's name. It only says the woman in Bethany. But Jesus acknowledged her act of service and worship. I love this point. Women, people may not even know our name, may not even recognize us, but Jesus knew us. And this is what is important. His praises more than others' recognition of whatever we do, big or small. As Jesus said, truly I tell you, wherever the goodness is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her in Matthew 26, 13. The woman without a name. The second one, Mary, the mother of Jesus who bears much pains. In Luke 2, 33 to 34, it says, Then Simeon blessed, the, blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own heart too. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has suffered many sorrows. To mention some, remember her flight to Egypt to escape, to escape the infanticide. Then Simeon's prophes prophesying that her heart would be pierced. Those panic days in Jerusalem when she thought she had lost Jesus in the crowd. Where's my son? Where's my son? And then walking with Jesus to Calvary watching her son's execution, holding his body in her arms and placing him into the cold tomb, which is perhaps the most powerful suffering of all. Mary's eyes locked with the eyes of the boy she once nursed, once tickled, once watched fall asleep, and now in her arms without life. Think about it. The first person who held our Savior at birth is a woman. And the last person who was with him at his death at the cross is a woman. Her mother, Mary. A woman from cradle to the cross. Woman, I know, from birth to death, we will all be on our loved one's side. Mary was not the first nor the last mother to hold the broken body of her child in her arms. She was not the first nor the last 
to weep in the company of mothers as they stumble their way to an open grave. It happens every day. When famine claims another little life, when the sudden arrival of blood represents the end of a pregnancy, when cancer strikes, when the phone rings and the news is bad, pains, suffering that women are still enduring up to this time. And the third, the third, the third, the three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, who patiently waited in Luke 25, 55 to 56. It says, the women had come with him from Galilee, follow, from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb on how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. In Mark 16, 1 to 5, it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they could embalm him. Very early on the Sunday morning, as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up, saw that it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone and walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed all in, a, in white. They were completely taken aback, astonished. Church, most of Jesus' disciples had abandoned him, leaving the few remaining and mostly men, women. Remember, because they were afraid that if they recognized People will recognize them with Jesus that they might also arrest them. So who remain? They're mostly women with a body to bury. According to Jewish law, no work could be done once the sun set, so they had to hurry. The important job of preserving Jesus' body with spices would have to wait until the Sabbath, the Sabbath was over. These women waited. For sure, it was long, terrible, sad wait, but they patiently waited. And the last is Mary Magdalene, who saw the risen Lord in John 20. Gospel accounts vary, but all four identified Mary Magdalene as among the first witnesses of the empty tomb. John 20, 16 to 18 reads, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You know, women were considered unreliable witnesses at that time. As a fact that may explain why the Apostle Paul omitted the women from the resurrection account entirely in his letter to the Corinthian church. So their proclamation of the goodness was dismissed by the, by the men as an idle tale, the type of a silly gossip of uneducated women. Actually, in the Philippines, we call them now marites. And I was joking uh, to Pastor, see, we are the first Marites. <laughs> but we were telling the truth because we were the ones who, uh, the women were the ones, the ones who, who proclaimed Jesus as risen. But Mary Magdalene, a woman, was entrusted by Jesus to spread the good news of his resurrection. He is risen. Yeah, God knows. If you tell it to a woman, for sure it will reach from here and beyond. Yeah? So that's how God, God is wise. <laughs> okay, so do women matter? Yes. Based on these four accounts of women in the Holy Week story, yes, women matter. And today, as we celebrate women, although God's message is for every one of us, not just for women, I would like us women to see that women matter 
And it is because she is who God says she is. So finding who you are as a woman. Women, who do you think you are? What is your identity? So let's define first identity. Identity is, our, is your concept of who you are. It's more of who I am. Where do you find your identity with? It's where your value comes in. Women, let us not put our identity in the wrong things. Women, let's find our identity in Christ. Yes, thank you. Amen to that. And what does it mean to have our identity in Christ? It's to have your hope, your confidence, your trust centered in Christ. Centered in Christ, not in your career, not in your relationships. It's not in how much is in your bank account. It's not what men's opinion of you or not in what others think of you. But you know, there's so many things that we put our hope as we men or our trust and confidence in, and they are all unstable platforms. Because what will happen when it all falls through? But if we put our identity in what gets, with what God says about us, then when all of those things fall away, we're still secure. Amen to that. As women, there are so many things that we allow ourselves to define us, like career. Also, women tend to define themselves with relationships, with their husband, their social status, or their child. Or for a single person, maybe the person they're dating. That's their identity. Some put their identity in social media, with the likes, in Facebook or Instagram. Any or all of this may feel like solid foundations, but none of them are permanent. Say it, none of them are permanent. Any of them could change without warning. If you base your identity on things like success, wealth, power, physical appearance, and so on, you are setting yourself up for great disappointment. A sudden job loss could leave you questioning your choices in life. One piece of gossip in your way could destroy your reputation. Even if it's untrue, your appearance will change as you get older. Yes. <laughs> in as much as we want to ha always have 23 based life, <laughs> it's kind of like, I think it's 32 now. <laughs> yeah. Because yes, we don't, we don't put our identity in anything that we'll, that we'll, that we'll lose. Your true identity is something that cannot be taken from you through loss in this world. You can lose your job. Your husband can leave you. You can have a child that dies. And that if your identity comes from being a wife, a mother, a doctor, an attorney, a counselor, a teacher, and filling in the blanks, your identity can be devastated by a loss. Our identity should be in Christ. I have learned my lesson. My identity in Christ is something that I cannot that cannot be taken from me. Because my identity is in Christ. So when I am coaching women in whatever they want to achieve or be better off in their lives, I tell them, remember, at the end of the day, their identity and their worth comes from who they are in Christ because that is permanent. That's their truest identity. You may identify yourself as a mom, but your truest identity is in Christ. Although there are women who tie their identity in fitness. We want to look good. Some women tie their identity to their, to their career and become very burned out. And it's a disservice. When we get so focused on our career or work or ministry, when the priorities get out of line with what God made us to be, it's self-defeating. And I was once one of those women. I was a workaholic. I am a recovering workaholic. 
I can't stop working. I need to do something. For a time in my life, I placed my identity in my work and ministry. I was so caught up with my counseling career that I filled my schedule every day with four to five counselors that I had 72 counselors in a month. I kept on thinking I need to do it. I placed my identity in my counseling ministry, but thinking that somebody needs me. I can't say no. God wants me to do this. And I placed my, my identity in my counseling ministry. But God, in His grace, let me experience burnout emotionally and physically. And it's a time to rebuild. Then I heard God spoke or speak to me. I love you just as much when you are not counseling or working, when you are just sitting and resting. And then that's when I started realigning my identity to where it should be. I learned my lesson. We don't earn our identity from the Lord. It's a gift. Amen. Amen. We don't need to work hard to earn our identity. It's a gift from God. Lisa Bieber says, It's only when we begin to see who Jesus really is that we begin to see who we really are. Women, if we put our identity in our career or work, when it's shaken, our whole foundation is shaken and it puts us in a very vulnerable place. We women usually act and perform how we think others want us to be. It's kind of like normal for women, generally. We measure our worth with others' opinions of us and it's tiring. But God will put us at the end of ourselves so we may see who God is and who he made us to be. Woman, you are not what others see. You are who God sees. That's who you are. Our identity is in God who is unchanging. He is reliable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you find your identity in Him, you will never ultimately be let down because He has proven time and time again to be trustworthy. Your true identity, identity is ultimately based on what God has done for you. In the Bible, God tells us often about how He views His people. Let's take a look at what he says about you if you receive him as your Lord and Savior. Don't look at the world to get your identity, pursue Jesus. Women, and also men, you are loved. Even if sometimes you think your husband doesn't love you, your children doesn't love you, or your friends doesn't love you, you are loved. Tell it to yourself, I am loved. In Christ, you are not only loved, but chosen. You are loved. You were created with a purpose. You were created uniquely and with intention. God lovingly designed every detail of your person. And you know what? You are chosen. Even if you think somebody, oh, I hope he my boss will choose me. Will cho no, you are chosen. In Christ, you are not only loved, but chosen. Tell it to yourself, I am chosen. God sent his own son to earth to die in your place so that you could be included in his family. God was not obligated to choose you on your performance or credentials. You don't need to have a master's degree to be chosen. God has chosen you without it. You are no mistake. You are chosen and wanted. And you are forgiven. You know, women will, yeah. yes, hallelujah, you are forgiven. You know how women will always like feeling guilty because we are natural nurturers? You are forgiven in God's eyes. If you have accepted what Jesus did for you, you are completely forgiven. Say to yourself, I am forgiven. Thank you, Lord, I am forgiven. 
because I'm not perfect. I have failures. From his perspective, you are without sin. It's not that what you won't sin, but when he looks at you, he calls you forgiven. That is something on which you can build your identity. And you are redeemed. Say it. I am redeemed. When God looks at you, he does not see a former sinner. He does not see you in light of who you once were. He sees you as redeemed, a new creation that has been made whole. You do not have to define yourself in light of your past mistakes because we all have mistakes. God does not do that. You can walk in the identity of someone who is made new in Christ. And you are adopted. It means that you have been adopted into his family. Say, I am adopted. You are considered a legitimate child of the God of the universe, having all the rights and standing of Jesus, his son. I am adopted. In 1 Peter 2, 9 says, and please read this with me. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen and amen. Seeing yourself as God sees you matters. Your sense of worth is found in accepting your God-given identity as chosen, valued, and loved. If you put your faith in Jesus, you have a new identity in him. The more you get to know Jesus through his word and time in prayer, the more you will understand your identity in him. Insecurities, guilt, shame, we usually struggle with this. If we think we aren't able to do what is expected of us because we are natural nurturers. You know how women are. Am I being a good mom? Am I being a good husband? If what, am I being a, a good pastor's wife? Am I doing what is being expected of me? We struggle with those thoughts. But you don't find out who you are in the presence of people. You find out who you are in the presence of God. People can tell you, you are this and that. You can tell me, I am this and that. It doesn't matter who people say you are. It doesn't matter who you say I am. Woman, what matters is who God says you are. What matters is who God says I am. God knows what I've been through. He knows what I can do and I cannot do. He knows me in and out. And that is what matters. Don't allow people to define you and don't allow Satan to define you. Just listen to who God says you are. God sees in us what we really are and not what the world wants us to be. Let us begin to see ourselves from the eyes of a loving creator who gave us beautiful qualities that makes us different and unique. So we can say, if you can tell, say it with me. Everybody can say it with me, even if you're not a woman. But woman, please shout this to the Lord. My father is the one who created me. And only my creator has the right to identify me. I am who God says I am. No other voice matters, none, not even my own. I am loved, I am chosen, I am forgiven, I am redeemed, I am a child of God. I am a woman. I am beautiful, capable, and enough because that is how God designed me. My identity is in Christ. Amen and amen. So we men, be empowered. You are special to God. 
Your identity is in Christ. You are equipped. Don't doubt yourself. Engage and be empowered to lead in the church and the community. You can make a difference. God anoints men in the ministry. And God anoints women too. Amen, Amen to God. God has chosen the women on the Holy Week events for a significant role, and he also has designed you for a significant role in his story. You matter. Your voice matters to amplify, to amplify Jesus, our Messiah. So happy Women's History Month to all the beautiful and lovely women of the Church of God. God bless you all. To God be the glory. all the women, women to please stand. While we're reading the word, I said, I am a woman, and I read that word too. <laughs> Sorry, I am a man. <laughs> we want to pray for you, woman. Can you just look around? Here's our women in our church. I just want to say thank you thank you for your faithfulness to God to the church we honor you man can we say we love you we love you I want to pray for you right now Lord we celebrate women today and we thank you for all the women in our midst today and in their homes or wherever they are and Father, help us to respect them and give them honor that is due to them as co-servants and ministers for the advancement of your kingdom. And Father, let them remember that they are what you say they are. They are more than their appearance. They are beautiful because of what you, our Father, has put in their hearts. And Father, heal them in every aspect of their lives equip them empower them to be a changing agent to this ailing world father we thank you because you will bless them right now in jesus name everybody says amen and amen let's all sing this next song Oh! 
Thank you, Lord God, for your message this morning for us. Not just for men, but for women too, that we are loved, we are chosen, we are forgiven, we are redeemed, Lord God, by the true King. We are adopted into your family. And we cannot have our identities taken away from us. Thank you, Lord God, for this gift that you have given us. That we are not sinners anymore, Lord God. But we are made new. And we, are, we can see ourselves, Lord God, as you see us. So help us, Lord God, every day to walk with you. To know you more to know you so that we can see ourselves. We love you, Lord God, and we praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And God, as we leave this sacred place, God, continue to breathe through us so that we may see your light, feel your warmth, know your wisdom, and taste your goodness. Because of your bread, we breathe. We run. We hope and we fight. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, we honor and glory forever and ever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, everybody says, Amen, amen and Amen. God bless you all, everyone.
Richards. God bless you.